Hello, hello everybody, how are you doing? Well, it's very strange, it's very strange. Uh, the sun is shining. I've just been into town, I didn't want to, but I had to. Uh, Headingley, of uh, commentator's fame, now five. Uh, and uh, there's still a fair few people out. Uh, I've tried to keep my distance. <laughs> Uh, just had to go to the bank uh, because what I wanted to do on phone banking, uh, if there anything emergency stuff. So little slice of life in the uh, month of uh, March uh, 2020. Now let's go back 30 years and three months, and it's the dawning of a brand new decade. It's 1990. This is the very first of these videos to look at that magic decade. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll get all the way to the end of it. So let's just take a quick pause for breath and uh, look at where we're at so far. We've had 16, now that's a lot of music throughout the 80s, from 83 to 89. Uh, in terms of format, the 80s has seen CDs come in. So at the time of Now One, almost all of those singles would have been seven inches uh, with 12 inch dance remixes. By 89, the 12-inch dance mixes were still coming. Uh, were still massive for all the dance stuff, uh, but cassette singles and CD singles uh, were coming in more and more. And, in fact, singles as a whole were declining to the point where at Christmas 89, uh, the UK singles chart uh, sold as little as ever. And I think the number one at the time, uh, Hanging Tough by the New Kids on the Block, uh, was the lowest ever selling UK number one. So as we start 1990, it's a difficult time for the traditional now singles market. Uh, it needs to do some pretty good stuff to, to pull itself uh, out from its funk. And uh, the 1990s really saw seven inch singles die off other than in a few niches. Uh, 12 inches continued to be the dominant form of DJ friendly medium, although uh, towards the end of the decade, CDKs and stuff started coming in. Uh, so really, 1990, we're looking at CD singles, some 7-inch singles, 12-inch singles. And in terms of the Now album itself, predominantly Now, I don't even know if it was available on vinyl. Certainly, this was the first one I actually bought immediately on CD. Uh, so there's kind of a sound quality shift as well. We're on a sort of digital format now. Uh, and then let's, uh, now let's get down to the music itself. Uh, Erasure kick things off. They've been on many of these uh, Now albums, and in many ways, this really isn't a very 1990 sound. It sounds more 1982. Uh, it could have been a hit any time through the 80s. Uh, it's a great song, though, actually. I'm really enjoying it, listening to it. I've not heard it for a while. Uh, and after Drama, which I thought was bilge, uh, they've actually found their knack for a melody again uh, and a bit of emotion. Uh, very blue video. Uh, so yeah, this kicks off now 17, this kicks off the 90s, uh, and although it's got that kind of retro 80s sound, uh, the fact that techno and electro and sort of bleepy synths were coming back again uh, made this simultaneously quite uh, of its time. Uh, and I think as you find as we go through this album, uh, we might find some reflections of very early 80s, even pre-now. Uh, so let's go through and let's see what we've got. Bringing us back to the more modern world, uh, we've got Better World by the Rebel MC and I've talked before about how there was a kind of second summer of love ethos going along and, and a lot of positivity, uh, but mixed with that it wasn't a naive 60s positivity, it was grounded in reality uh, and Better World, it's not the Rebel MC's best song, but it's, it's sort of conscious uh, dance if you like, conscious rap. Now the next song's hardly politically conscious. <laughs> They're certainly going in extreme so far. We're being pulled in every single direction, from Eurasia to the Rebel MC. I guess it's because opposites attract. And it's that's... YouTube music. Yep, it's YouTube music, giving them their plug, because they are providing the music, uh, even though I did buy the album. So I do kind of own it. Uh, yep, Paula Abdul, again, opposites attract. Uh, a song that's nowhere near as popular, I wouldn't have thought, as uh, Straight Up. But it still had 18 million views. There's some cartoon cat uh, doing a kind of obligatory, by this point, rap. Uh, still kind of late 80s sounding rather than 90s. Still got her heavy snares. This is okay, actually. 
uh, yeah, this is not bad. I wouldn't say it's still very relevant or anything, but uh, it's got high production quality. Uh, this now is followed by probably the first real Bonafide classic so far. The first one that is absolutely still played today. Uh, and it's a, f a third, I think, incarnation for uh, Norman Cook, who's already been in the House Martins uh, on, uh, well, on a couple. Uh, he's done his own first solo single with Blame It on the Bass Line. Here he is under the moniker of Beats International. And here is an all time classic song. Uh, yeah, you all know that. So, really, this is the beginning of the 90s now, properly. Uh, I like how we're still miming bass uh, in the video when we all know it's Guns of Brixton by the uh, Clash. Uh, ditto, someone's miming drums. Uh, no one's miming at how harmonica. Oh, yeah, they are. Spoke too soon. Of course, it's all samples, and uh, this really kind of sets out the the Norman Cook template uh, for the best part of a decade and beyond. Uh, it's just a cut up, but what he's done so well with it is to keep it uh, all tied up with a great song by the SOS band. Didn't make an hour, but it was a big hit from uh, 1984, Just Be Good To Me. Uh, so here's Dub Be Good To Me. And uh, Lindy, Lo Lindy Layton, uh, who had not done anything I'd heard of before, she does an absolutely amazing vocal performance, really pitch perfect. Uh, this song made number one, uh, and it really, really did just set the template for so much. It's kind of reggae-ish, really, uh, but that's because it's built on uh, Guns of Brixton, which had a kind of reggae groove. Uh, this is the new kind of pop. This wouldn't have been pop even 12 months ago, but from 1990 onwards now, this is pop. So absolutely a paradigm shifter. Really, really is a uh, brilliant song. Okay, uh, our little uh, running order here is really zig zigzagging here, there, and everywhere at the moment. Uh, we follow it up with a more kind of light reggae from UB40, back to covers mode. One of their better ones, uh, Kingston Town. I love the original song. Their version's pretty good. It's, it's not really done a lot, it's fairly bland. But, you know, if you don't do a lot to a song like uh, Kingston Town, you're not really going to ruin it either. Uh, it is what it is. It's not about Kingston upon Hull either, if you're wondering. Or Kingston upon Thames. Right, okay, now, now things get very, very trippy. Uh, and very, very 1990. I still don't, well, possibly this, but we haven't really got to the kind of real nub of 1990 yet, and we're about to now uh, with this. See how long it takes you to recognise this. You'll get it instantly. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, what do you think of this then? <laughs> Who remembers this? Another one I bought, uh, Candy Flip, and of course, Strawberry Fields Forever. Uh, now, I, this is one that I could pontificate about having done my Long and Winding Road video. Uh, I also have quite a strong opinion on this song, which is that John would have fucking loved it. John would have been jumping around the room to this. He would have even got off the couch and turned off the TV. I think this is uh, more in alignment with John's ethos than, uh, well, than pretty much any, you know, anything Paul did. Uh, why? Because it just gets it gets what this song's about innately. Uh, it's unpretentious. It's basically iconoclastic. Uh, it doesn't have any undue reverence for what the Beatles were in terms of culture and symbolism. I mean, you know, they are due reference for that. But John Lennon was always a great debunker. He didn't want people, like, you know, sort of analysing the hidden meanings of all his songs. Hence, The Walrus Was Paul. Uh, this song, I've been to Strawberry Fields. Uh, well, it's a gate now, really. A gate in some woods. Uh, but it's an incredibly atmospheric place. This song just captures the atmosphere. It captures the atmosphere. It sticks that ubiquitous James Brown funky drummer beat on it. Uh, they can't really sing. Uh, but it, it really just captures the vibe of the original. Uh, and it, I think it just brings it relevant to a kind of rave 1990 audience. Uh, I'm sure it's not very uh, kind of respected by music critics and stuff. 
but I, I think this is as good as the original. Uh, I quite happily listen to this uh, equally. And I'm a huge Beatles fan. You know, A Day in the Life and stuff. Uh, best song ever, really. Uh, and I love the original all this. But let's be honest, what's the original got that this hasn't? Maybe a few more backwards bits and stuff. Uh, the tune, the melody, the vibe, uh, they're all still here. So this is one of the best Beatles covers ever. There we go. Okay, right. <laughs> Jesus, the program is on here. We're bloody on Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Because we go straight from this to Tina Turner and uh, I Don't Want to Lose You. That's not a bad song. It's a pretty good uh, late 80s, early 90s, Tina Turner, fairly slow. Not a kind of, not an out and out ballad, but a slow, mature woman's a, a, a song for ladies of a certain age, as it says in the lyrics. Uh, it really doesn't follow Strawberry Fields Forever, but it's not bad. Uh, that's followed by good old Phil Collins. A mere change of decades, not going to rain on his parade. God, my puns are getting good today, aren't they? Uh, I wish it would rain down. And again, again, it's actually really good. It's one of the best Phil Collins songs yet. Uh, it's a really big ballad. Uh, I've probably got Eric Clapton on guitar because it sounds like it. Big gospel choirs. Uh, this is Phil at his best. So, nice one. Even uh, Tina Turner and Phil Collins are still keeping up. Uh, now, we've gone from Candy Flip to Tina Turner to Phil Collins, and now we're back to Happy Mondays. Uh, surely they should have stuck Tina and Phil up with UB40 and Candy Flip down with these guys because uh, it's very much in keeping. Indie dance, really. 1990 was the year of indie dance, uh, and if we're going to go to one city that sums up the music of 1990, it's Manchester. Uh, and as someone who's done a record called the Manchester Dubs, uh, Manchester will forever have a place in my own heart in terms of musical and cultural and emotional history. It's an incredible city. It's a city of great people, uh, but it's also a city of great hardship and toughness. Uh, it's a divided city, that's for sure. Uh, but it's, above anything, a city of great art, great entertainment, uh, certainly inspired me and the people within it. Uh, Happy Mondays, Step On. They'd had a couple of songs before this. They'd broken through uh, with Hallelujah with uh, Kirsty McCall. But this was their mega, mega hit. Uh, this is Step On. Uh, and it's absolute textbook Manchester 1990 indie dance. Probably up there with Fool's Gold, which didn't make a now. Uh, and that was 89. Uh, but that and this, I'd say, were the twin uh, peaks of uh, the Manchester sound. Uh, they're different from Stone Roses. They're a lot more kind of, uh, I'd say, uh, badly behaved in a way. <laughs> now, well, the Stone Roses weren't, weren't that well behaved. They're more kind of laddie uh, and maybe not got some attitudes that have really stood the test of time in some ways. Uh, but they survived. They're still around. They're still cultural figures, bears. Uh, Sean in particular uh, and uh, yeah this is it's a cover it's a cover of an old 70s song uh, but it's very punky it's very funky uh, I think was it Paul Oakenfold who mixed it or was it Andy Weatherall uh, it's bloody great though really good uh, and one that definitely 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 is Andy Weatherall uh, R.I.P and if you want to know what all the fuss was about you only need to take one listen to this Another band who'd been around uh, through the late 80s. They'd started off kind of pure indie and punk, uh, but they'd discovered uh, dance music and the rave. Stuck it all together. We all know this one. We all love it. Absolute anthem. 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 From one of the best albums of all time, Screamadelica. Primal Scream. Uh, and it's, again, it's pure indie dance. It's got an indie aesthetic. They've listened to loads and loads of old records, loads of old rock and roll, loads of old funk and soul. Uh, they found a sampler, but they've, they're coming at kind of electronica and dance music from perspective of a rock band. Uh, Bobby Gillespie doesn't even sing properly. I mean, he does some singing on this. I think he goes, oh, yeah. But it's not got a lead vocal as such. Uh, so it's another paradigm shifter in terms of an indie song without a lead vocal. Uh, can you think of many? I can't. Uh, and the beat, it's kind of post-soul to soul in a way, but it's also kind of retro. 
Um, it does sound like it could have come out in the 60s. Uh, it's a real synthesis, uh, a synthesis of 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s sounds. In fact, maybe not 80s, 60s, 70s and 90s, everything but the 80s, really. Uh, I think, you know, there was a big feeling of, right, it's 1990 now, the 80s are gone. Uh, certainly with stuff like this. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Now, we've already had uh, UB40, we've already had Phil Collins... We've already had Tina Turner and we've already had Erasure. Uh, here's another band who came back. I think they'd come back last year with Personal Jesus. They're back again with Inky with Silence. It's another massive song. Totally stood the test of time. Wow, the stats on this one. Guess how many people? 180 million views. 180 million views. Another one I bought the single of. Another case, very light Erasure, probably the Vince Clark connection. Uh, where they transitioned into the 90s. Uh, it was still kind of reminiscent of the early 80s, uh, but it kind of moved on as well. Really, the drum percussion, it's quite subtle. It's really about the snares and the, and the, the sound of the drums, uh, what makes it 90s. It's kind of a, a, a groove thing, just slightly more syncopated. That's very much the beat of 1990. Uh, very enigmatic song uh, words are very unnecessary they can only do harm uh, it's kind of doomy and dark but uplifting at the same time quite new order uh, I don't really know why it's so popular because it's a great song but it's not like a really special song as such everything just comes together really well on it uh, this is going to take ages at this rate I'm only at track 11 and I've already done 17 minutes how long are we going to be it's a reflection of how good this music is Okay, one that's maybe not stood the test of time in the same way, uh, but it's still a great song by a great band. More indie dance. It's Real, Real, Real by Jesus Jones. High octane. Some of this stuff really even uh, kind of uh, almost noise. Uh, real, 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 pretty catchy. Uh, got a good kind of attitude to it. Good joie de vivre. One that didn't really have a lot of joie de vivre, really. And that bang the opposite. Uh, but still good, because uh, it's all human life. Uh, this is How It Feels by the Inspiral Carpets, the other side of the Manchester sound. Uh, there was quite a lot to it, really. Uh, some of it was kind of fairly forward-thinking. This stuff was actually really retro, uh, but it was still good. I, I bought the album. Uh, this was going right back with the kind of old organ. A uh, great video, which I'm sure was filmed in the Peak District, uh, the moors just outside Manchester, uh, some lad from the top estate. Uh, and when I drive to Manchester, I drive through the outskirts of Oldham, where these guys were from. Uh, and there's a really kind of bleak estate uh, that I drive through. Moorside, I think it's called. Uh, and I'm sure that's where they mean. And I always like to listen to this song as I'm driving around Oldham. Uh, yeah, I really like it. It's kind of windswept, it's northern. Uh, and it's uplifting, even though it's, you know, this is how it feels when your work means nothing at all. Uh, it's kind of transcendent. They did some other songs uh, of varying quality. Uh, Dragging Me Down was a good one, but this is still probably their best song. Okay, this is followed by another kind of non-Manchester indie one. Uh, this is another band who've been around for a while and they've finally broken through. It's uh, House of Love and Shine On. Great song, great song. This is more like you kind of... Uh, well, I suppose this is following on from some of those ones that would have been on the late 80s now. Uh, that I said were kind of proto 90s. I was thinking of stuff like this, uh, really where the late 80s and the early 90s just kind of merge. Uh, this is just a really good song. Uh, I don't really know much about them as a band. I think they had a few songs, uh, but yeah, great song. Followed by the first appearance of another big, big, big band, big 90s band, uh, and one of the heavier songs on a now album. Uh, classic song, classic band, classic album. Uh, and it's, wait for it, Faith No More and From Out of Nowhere. Uh, and this was, yeah, on the kind of rockier side, states this side. I'm headbanging. Uh, I still think this is one of their best songs, uh, one of their biggest hits anyway. Uh, we follow this one up with some more rock uh, from the Choir Boys. Nowhere near as famous as Faith No More. They, they had a kind of almost retro-y, pub-rocky kind of sound. Pretty good, if you like that sort of thing. 
And that takes us to the end of side one, and I've already been almost 20 minutes. So that's a really good side, actually. Uh, it's had all sorts on it. We started with Eurasia, and we've, we've ended up with the Choir Boys. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, and we've gone via um, Norman Cook, Faith No More, the Spiral Carpets, Depeche Mode, Primal Scream, all sorts, all sorts. Uh, so certainly value for money there, something for everyone. OK, let's crack on with disc two. And we start with one that I really liked at the time. I'm not sure if it still, uh, if it still stands up. Uh, now, I've been in th really enthusiastic about uh, Technotronic and Pump Up The Jam. This was their third single, and this was the first one that had MC Eric. I mentioned him. It's still banging, yeah. I'm bopping along already. I really like this. It's got no tune to speak of, uh, but you don't need one. It's just got a guy going, this beat is technotronic, this beat is technotronic, but it's so banging and dancey and clubby, uh, and the beat just pulls you along. They've almost taken the same bit from uh, Pump Up The Jam uh, and just kind of moved the notes around a bit. Uh, and there's only so many times they could do this, and this is probably nearly the last. But it was good while it lasted. Uh, followed by Happening All Over Again, uh, which sounds like a description of Technotronic songs. That's Lonnie Gordon. This was a Stock Aiken and Waterman V2 kind of thing, where they realised that the game was up with the old style stuff that I've been moaning about for so long. And they kind of tried to get a bit more hip. Now, Lonnie Gordon was a good singer, actually. Really good singer. And happening all over again was a significant improvement. I don't think it's really stood the test of time. And I don't think it's really a bona fide house or club anthem. Uh, but, it, you know, for Stock Aiken and Waterman, it was definitely a shot in the arm. Uh, Followed by Don't You Love Me by the 49ers. Uh, I prefer Touch Me, which was their original, uh, which was a really, really good Italian house banger. Bit like this, actually. Uh, Don't You Love Me, cut from the same cloth. Uh, almost uh, pretty much just, again, like Technotronic. They'd have one song and they'd just move all the elements around a bit, give it a different name. Followed by Good Old Jimmy Somerville, uh, Read My Lips. Now, he's still stuck in the 80s. It's very 80s, high energy, good lyrics, another quite, uh, let's say, gay rights orientated one. So uh, good that he's still got the age of it. Followed by good old Cliff. He's still around, stronger than that. A passable song, bridging him into the early 90s uh, relatively successfully. Pretty bland, but at least he's made the effort. Right, <laughs> one that I've not played for so long, I really don't know if I dare... Uh, it's either going to be awful or surprisingly good. It is Jamtronic. Pumping up that jam one more time. Uh, and they're also pumping up Sydney Youngblood with that beat. I think that was from Sit and Wait. Uh, it's another day in paradise. Barely only a couple of months after Phil Collins has done his version. Uh, they've put out this uh, cover. Italian again, I think. Definitely Euro, maybe Netherlands. Uh... So yes, Sydney Youngblood meets Phil Collins. Um, I don't really like the original. Uh, uh, Jamtronic war da Deutsch, Deutsch Dance Project von Nikita Warren and Fischer and Volkama Kaff Grunder on the productions des projects for Charlie Glass. Uh, there you go. The est single Another Day in Paradise, Darren Original von Phil Collins stamped. Oh yeah. And that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Trotz, Viola, and their uh, cover production in Gelang, Kain, Waiterer, Charterfog. And that pretty much sums up what I think of that. Right. <laughs> now, I think these next guys really were Italian. Uh, now, all right, let me ask you a question. Why, why did that one really not work? Why does this next one work? I am think, I liked it at the time. Let's see if it still does. Uh, were they Italian? This is JT and the big family. Uh, it's that soul to soul break again. Uh, yeah, these guys were... I don't know where they're from, actually. I think they're Italian. Um, so basically, what's going on here, then? We've got the soul to soul beat... And we've got uh, Moments in Love by The Art of Noise. Uh, so it's kind of early mashup with some other bits on it. Uh, I think it probably works because 
better than Another Day in Paradise because I didn't really like the song Another Day in Paradise and I do like uh, Back to Life and I do like Moments in Love. So basically, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. I think that's a lesson from that one. This is where we're at in 1990 then. These sort of cut up, break beaty, solely funky tunes. Uh, now another big hit, a breakthrough hit coming up. Someone who had loads of kind of underground hip hoppy things, uh, no real big chart hits. Here we go, it's a bit more mainstream, a bit more pop, uh, but it's still kind of mainly R&B. It's Mantronics and Got To Have Your Love. I think this one came out of the very tail end of 89. Very distinctive clap on this. And uh, good vocal performance. Uh, this song, it's not actually had that many views. It's only had a one million, uh, which surprises me. I thought they'd have a lot more than that. Um, followed by Business. <laughs> Don't stop the party line. Uh, this just reminds me of those old phone line, party line things. Have a party on your phone. Like five pounds per minute or whatever. The song... Uh, I don't really recall it. I do recall it. Should we have a quick listen just to check? Uh, but I recall it being a bit second rate, a bit gimmicky. Uh, business, don't miss the party line. Do, 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 do. I remember this one, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's okay, I suppose. It's not one of the best dance songs, let's put it that way, but I guess it's a bit ahead of its time. Uh, this is followed by one that I really did like, uh, and that's Easy Pussy, Everything Starts With An E, uh, which was, I believe, Jeremy Healy uh, and MC Kinky. Jeremy Healy went on to be a big house DJ. Uh, no, this one's not all that really, is it? Let's stick a bit of uh, Easy Pussy. I remember it starts with the Jimi Hendrix, uh, solo which is pretty cheeky uh but you know he who's dares wins fortune favors the brave yeah there we go <laughs> great intro great way to start a tune and it cracks on okay now this is good because this is some real kind of almost ragger uh possibly the first ragger on an hour album um uh, certainly in terms of her vocals um uh, everything starts with an e a reflection of the uh, continuing rave culture that kind of started off with Acid House and was still going strong. And uh, this is followed by D-Mob, talking of Acid, and Put Your Hands Together. They're still going, this is their fourth song, and their quality's held up, actually. Normally by their fourth single, uh, these sort of dance bands start to run out of steam or repeat themselves, as I was saying. But D-Mob, he consistently managed to switch things around a bit and do things slightly different. Uh, that's followed by another classic, uh, real classic, uh, and I'm not actually saying it because his name's Adamski, which was what my dad called me. Uh, yep, it's Adamski and Killer. And of course, the great uncredited Seal. This would kick off his career with great panache. Uh, and in terms of music, it's interesting because it's, it's again, it's a kind of paradigm shifter. House has got so sort of dominant now that it's the bedrock, not just of dance music, uh, but it's starting to widen out and we're getting the indie dance. And now this is sort of almost uh, well, a neo-soul, I suppose you'd call Seal. Uh, very 90s, immediately. It's, it really couldn't have even existed a year ago. Uh, it's very kind of new agey and introspective in the lyrics. Uh, it's not kind of hands in the air rave. Uh, it's darker and more somber. Uh, and it's still very much a song, uh, but it's built around the one bass line, uh, which doesn't really change throughout the whole song. Uh, and just more and more stuff's added and taken from it. So really good song, this one. Still sounds good. Followed by Chime, which was the first uh, single by Orbital, I believe. And Orbital would go on to be huge throughout the 90s. One of the best dance electronica outfits, Hartnell Brothers. Uh, actually from the town of Seven Oaks where I went to school they went to the other school in the town and the name Orbital derives from a London Orbital motorway the M25 which passes by 
And that's where a lot of the early illegal raves were held, just kind of in and around the M25 orbital corridor. So again, a bit of kind of uh, social social history there. Uh, we follow that one with Tongue and Cheek and Tomorrow, bit meh, uh, pretty second rate. They're okay, uh, kind of more solely house, I guess. Uh, they did a version of Forget Me Nots, which was pretty good. Now we follow that one up with one which I'll play, and it's actually very similar in composition to this one, uh, Killer. It's Electro 101, talking with myself. Uh, and yeah, it uses a lot of the same kind of elements. It's got one bass line all the way through, that kind of mid-tempo house or post-house. Uh, but again, it's kind of doomy and a bit darker, a bit more introspective. Uh, and over the top of this kind of repetitive bass line, uh, you get its kind of electronic sounds and you get a great vocal and a great song uh, from Billy Ray Martin. Very, very strange lady, uh, German lady with fantastic English. Uh, she went on to have a few uh, kind of dance hits uh, but yeah this also has the Mission Impossible theme halfway through just randomly uh, I don't think it's that well known it's a bit of a kind of a connoisseur's choice if you like but I think people who know their dance music uh, would really rate this one uh, even if it's not really that kind of mass appeal uh, right this is followed now by the final song uh, and it is Sydney Youngblood with uh, a version of I'd Rather Go Blind that I really don't think made the charts. Uh, and a classic old soul song, and he Sydney Young blooded it up a bit, made it a bit more modern. Uh, it was a pretty passable version. Uh, and that rather anticlimactic end to what has been an interstellar journey. Uh, now 17 is, well, it's groundbreaking in terms of all the other nows. They've really started all over again, and yet they've bought just enough elements from the originals uh, to keep it consistent. So uh, it's a great synthesis of old and new. Uh, going through then, what tracks are real classics? Dub Be Good To Me, uh, Welcome To The World Of Norman Cook, Welcome To The 90s, uh, and for a lot of people, Welcome To The Clash as well, which has got to be good. Uh, Strawberry Fields Forever, possibly uh, in a niche way. Uh, I don't think people really know that version that well, unless they were there at the time. Uh, so it's maybe not a classic as such. Uh, Step On by The Happy Mondays and even more Loaded by Primal Scream. That's probably the most famous song so far. Enjoy the Silence by Depeche Mode, absolutely. Uh, in indie circles, Shine On uh, by The House of Love. In rock circles, Faith No More from Out of Nowhere. Uh, what else have we got? What else have we got? A few totally forgotten uh, dance ones. None of them really stand out till we get to Killer by Adamski. Uh, so there we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's very different from Now 16. There are a lot of songs that are totally forgotten, but they're still good. Uh, they're kind of forgotten classics, a lot of them. Uh, there's some real hidden gems on this. Uh, and that's the longest video I've made so far. So uh, the 90s promises to be very, very interesting. Watch this space. And as always, everybody, uh, much love. Stay tuned uh, to what's going on in the world, but don't get consumed by it. Uh, critical thinking, as always. Uh, do what's best for you and your lot and uh, the world at large, and we'll all get by. You take care. See you later. We'll meet again.